good morning students today we are going to discuss spin of electron so spin of dirac electron electron which is moving very fast relativistically what we call this as dirac electron so we are going to discuss the spin concept uh, of the dirac electron dirac particle and thereby we are going to uh, discuss the spin angular momentum of an dirac electron okay and of course we know the spin concept earlier in the year 1921 when uh, stern gerlach uh, performed a beautiful experiment a beam of uh, silver atoms um, which passes through an inhomogeneous magnetic field we will have two spots which will be observed on the screen okay there are uh, two spots on the screen so when magnetic field is on so immediately there will be two spots classically speaking uh, this will have all uh, uh, orientation the spin will have all orientation whereas in quantum mechanics they have observed only two spots one is for up another one is for down so spin up and spin down at the time people did not know uh, proper reason and this was not explained clearly by stern and gerlach whereas uh, in the year 1925 Uh, Ullenbeck and Goldsmith they explained clearly about the concept of spin which is nothing but h bar by 2 so one is uh, spin spin up is for h bar by 2 spin down for minus h bar by 2 so spin is quantized the orientation of the angular momentum is quantized that concept has been brought out clearly by Ullenbeck and Goldsmith of course we know that uh, when electron the electron passes through the inhomogeneous magnetic field electron will have both linear combination of spin up and spin down the moment when you are going to measure with the help of the magnetic field and it shows spin up and spin down okay suppose the orientation is upward like this then this will show only uh, up spin up if the orientation is downward With, the, with respect to the magnetic field and this will show only spin down so one is h bar by 2 and another one is minus h bar by 2 this concept h bar by 2 concept will also um, be brought out by dirac later here using relativistic quantum mechanics and we are going to look into this h uh, bar by 2 concept that also by dirac and we know that uh, the electron uh, electron spin is electron of course its uh, spin of the electron is intrinsic property it is built in property inherent property uh, actually speaking electron is not a particle electron is associated with the wave for a particle we can say that either it can be a spin up or spin down for any rigid object if object is there then we can say that this is uh, spin up and spin down but the electron is associated with the wave for waves we can't say that the spin up and spin down we can't say which direction it will be so we can say that the spin concept is intrinsic property of the electron so electron is an extended object it is not a perfect object like a rigid one it is associated with the wave and also we can say this is an extended object okay now we know that already about the orbital angular momentum capital l we have studied a lot of concepts on uh, orbital angular momentum and thereby thereby we came across many derivations and if it is associated with s yes, s yes stands for spin angular momentum so l l stands for orbital angular momentum s yes stands for spin angular momentum together we will call this as total angular momentum the meaning of uh, j j will have a perfect meaning when it is added with j plus l plus s l alone will have no meaning s alone will have no meaning when it is added with l plus s that is orbital angular momentum with spin angular momentum only then the perfect meaning of total angular momentum is coming so that's very very important concept so we are studying all those things in vector atom model the spin orientation spin uh, space quantization all those things come under only in vector atom model 
in vector auto model we know that for example when uh, when atom is in say the magnetic field the magnetic field is switched on the energy levels will be split we know already this so suppose we consider that l equals 1 okay you have orbital uh, quantum number for l equal to 1 then m goes from minus l to plus l through 0 so there will be three levels correct for l equals 1 we can have m equals minus 1 0 plus 1 For l equal to 2, your m will be minus l to plus l through 0. So minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, plus 2. So we have five levels. Okay. So this is what we know already. The spin concept, as I said just now, uh, this is uh, with the help of orientation, spin up and spin down. So spin, the so space is quantized. How to visualize uh, this space is quantized? The quantization of space. It's a very simple idea. We just think of about a simple pendulum. For any simple pendulum, we know that the oscillation will be exactly like this. Okay? So we have simple pendulum. The oscillation will be exactly like this. If you are going to consider a conical pendulum, conical pendulum means the oscillation will be exactly like this. It is exactly like a cone. Okay? So simple pendulum oscillation will be like this. Whereas a conical pendulum, it will be exactly like this. Okay? I am going to combine these two. simple pendulum and conical pendulum for example for the oscillation if it is like this then i can have a cone suppose pendulum is like this okay the cone will be exactly like this suppose uh, cone is in the upper direction so simple pendulum the oscillation will be like this cone will be like this okay so simple pendulum suppose the oscillation like this means cone conical pendulum like this i am going to combine these two so for l equals uh, r2 you are ml m will be as i said minus 2 so this will be or minus 2 this will be or minus 1 this will be 0 and this will be plus 1 and that will be plus 2 you combine all the thing what we call this as spherical pendulum so this is actually the concept of vector vector auto model so this is the concept of vector auto model in which electron uh, has a spin okay so this is the idea about the spin concept which we are going to see now and uh, non relativistically people have found out earlier and this was this uh, has been clearly interpreted by dirac okay which we are going to see now so spin cannot be determined independently if it is associated with the l we can observe okay spin cannot be done cannot be measured independently the spin of the electron carries no energy and therefore it can be observed only if it is coupled with the orbital motion of the electron which is nothing but angular momentum orbital angular momentum so yes alone will have no meaning if it is associated with the l meaning is there okay so always j goes with l plus s this can be demonstrated through conservation of total angular momentum which we are going to see now and also through spin orbit uh, coupling energy which is out of syllabus for you okay so this will this we are not going to deal with whereas we are going to deal with conservation of total angular momentum through the equation of motion okay we are going to take some equations of motion from some pictures we will see now so we are going to take the equation of motion which we have already studied in quantum mechanics one mm, pictures like schrodinger picture heisenberg picture and interaction picture so from which we are going to demonstrate now okay so we know that the dynamical variable commutes with the hamiltonian any dynamical variable always will commute with the hamiltonian we know already and uh, dynamical variable which we are going to take here in the section is l okay we are going to take uh, the dynamical variable as l so whether l will commute with a hamiltonian or not we are going to find out okay of course we know that l equals r cross p the component of l we are going to take as lx ly l is that for the time being we are going to take the component as lx so using conservation of angular momentum the rate of change of lx of a particle in heisenberg picture is given by equation of motion exactly like this so we have already studied in quantum mechanics one about the pictures so this is about heisenberg picture in which hamiltonian depends on time okay so your ih cross dlx by dt which is equal to commutator of lx comma h okay so now if lx comma h okay any dynamical variable commutes with the hamiltonian suppose if it commutes with the hamiltonian the answer is 
zero. If it doesn't come out, means answer exists. Okay, answer is zero. If it is zero, you will have i which cross d l x by d t, and d l x by d t equal to zero. It implies that l x is is a constant. So l x meaning of l x will be constant of motion. So energy is conserved, momentum is conserved. So this is what the consideration of total angular moment. Okay, energy is conserved. So this is what uh, the idea is. We are going to use the Hamiltonian which Dirac has used. So we are going to use Dirac Hamiltonian and substitute here, and we are going to get the value. And suppose if it is equal to zero, then we can say that L x comma h commute with each other, and we can have the answer as a constant of motion. The energy is conserved. So this is the idea. As I said just now, we are going to replace h with Dirac Hamiltonian. Dirac Hamiltonian is given by c alpha dot p plus beta m c squared. So we know already about alpha and beta earlier, four by four matrices. Alpha r alphas, alpha x, alpha y, alpha z. They are connected with Pauli's spin operator, spin matrices. So we know already. So the component of L x is given as this, this expression. I repeat. We are going to find out the operator, the commutator operator, L x comma h. H is replaced with the Dirac Hamiltonian, and L x, L x is this one. Okay. Now, so we have now uh, we will first uh, uh, divide into two components, alpha into components. So this must be your alpha x p x, alpha y p y plus alpha z p z. So now we are going to use the commutator relation. First, look at uh, the commutator relation. First thing is y p z minus z p y commutator with beta. Answer will be zero. So both will commute with each other. This one will commute with beta. The answer is zero because both will commute with each other. So one point is over. Okay. The second one, you are going to commute with y p z with alpha x p x y with p x. Y with p x answer will be answer will be zero. X with p x y with p y z with p z answer exists, which is nothing but your I H cross. We have already studied in quantum mechanics one. So y with p p x both will commute with each other. So answer is zero. So what about y with p y answer exists? Both will not commute. What about y with uh, uh, p z answer is zero. So we have One answer. Okay, using this. Now we we'll have to use this. Similarly, is that with P X? Answer is zero. Is that with uh, P Y? Answer is zero. Is that with P Z? Answer will be answer exists. So we have now two answers. Okay, so we can write the two answers. So Y Y with Y with P Y. So we have Y P Z Y P Z comma C. C alpha y p y. So this is one answer. So we have another one. Is that p y with alpha? Is that p z? So C alpha is that p z? Okay. Now since alpha and beta commute with R and P, all the other commutators vanish. So equation 8.98 can be written as. Now we are going to use we are going to use this uh, answer for this commutator. So we have now y p y. Okay. We can we can write uh, C alpha y. This is the commutation rule. We have to follow only this rule. So C alpha y this side y with p y, then p z. Of course, y with p y will give you i h cross. Similarly, we have to use the commutation rule exactly like this. We can write only like this. So we have C alpha z, z comma p z, then p y. What will C p z? Commutation C p z will give you i h cross. You have i h cross here also. You have i h cross. You just take it common now, so that will give you i h cross. Of course, c is there. So remaining term will be your alpha y, p z. Here alpha z, p y. Answer exists. I h cross d l x by d t, which will give you some answer. It implies that l x and h, l x and h, do not commute with each other. See, answer exists. Suppose if it is equal to zero, we can say that L x commutes with Hamiltonian. Okay, but answer exists, so both will not commute with each other. So what does it mean? 
so we will not have any constant of motion lx is not a constant of motion similarly suppose you are going to apply for ly the answer will be the same l is that you will also get the same answer answer will exist so hence the orbital angular momentum l is not a constant of motion so we are going to we have substituted for l with the hamiltonian answer exists so we have concluded that l alone will not give you the particular answer which is nothing but a constant of motion so energy is not conserved is it okay now dirac thought on the other way around he added with lx with l he added one quantity that quantity is nothing but s he obtained one answer that answer is exactly opposite to that of this i repeat he added with l he added the spin angular momentum so dirac uh, derived this equation cleverly in such a way that he added this l with spin angular momentum he was able to get the answer exactly opposite to that of this now if you are going to add these two that will get cancelled and this factor left hand side will become zero so that's the idea okay we are going to see now however all the physical grounds of any system are expected to have a total angular momentum which is a constant of motion there must be an another contribution dirac dirac's contribution he thought cleverly to angular momentum l such that the commutator of its x component with h is negative on the right hand side just now i said so negative on the right hand side so which we are going to see now the addition of e added this factor okay so which is nothing but your uh, sigma prime which is nothing but your magnetic moment this is associated with pauli's matrices okay the addition the addition contribution comes from the operator h bar sigma prime the sigma prime is given by 2 by 2 matrix okay we'll see now sigma prime equal to sigma 0 0 sigma and uh, sigma is connected with alpha so we'll have 4 by 4 matrix of course okay so now the equation of motion as usual we'll have to find out the equation of motion whether it is conserved or not we'll have to find out so i h cross d sigma prime x by dt sigma sigma means sigma prime means automatically this has to go for sigma x sigma y sigma z okay for all the components it has to work out so sigma prime sigma 0 0 sigma what about sigma x sigma prime x so that will be sigma x 0 0 sigma x what about sigma prime y sigma y 0 0 sigma y and for sigma sigma prime is it also so i h cross d sigma prime x by dt which is in number sigma prime x divided uh, comma h we know already this equation which is nothing but which is nothing but equation of motion which you have taken from heisenberg picture the same idea now sigma a prime x and what about for h h we can write as a dirac hamiltonian okay now we are going to use uh, commutator rule okay commutator rule so using commutator rule first we will have to go only with the components so this will become alpha x p x plus alpha y p y alpha z p z so this can be written as exactly other terms are related be like this now we are going to use commutator rule just now i said that alpha x will come out with beta so answer is zero so first we are going to leave the first and last term the remaining term so remaining term will be your i i can pull c as common out i have pulled out so sigma prime x with alpha x i have written so p x is coming here plus sigma sigma prime x alpha y with the commutator so now commutator of sigma x prime comma alpha z so this is the first term we can consider this as second term and third term we are going to find out each value we are going to add all those things and we are going to put into equation 8.104 okay what of this a, this can be written as a comma b so ab minus b so we can write this as sigma prime x alpha x minus alpha x sigma prime x okay now we find out the expression for and value of first term so sigma prime x alpha x what is sigma x prime what is sigma x prime sigma x 0 0 sigma x what is alpha x alpha x is nothing but 0 sigma x sigma x is 0 okay so just to substitute and use the matrix operation so you know matrix operation which is nothing but 
sigma x multiplied by 0, 0 multiplied by sigma s, we are going to add these two, answer will be 0. Similarly, you can go for this operation, the answer will be sigma x squared. Similarly, you can go for this operation, the answer will be sigma x squared and the last operation answer will be 0. What is sigma x squared? Sigma x squared equals sigma y squared equal to sigma z squared equal to 1. We have already studied. So, 0, 1, 1, 0. So, we have found out for the first term, we have found out this expression for the first term. So, now we will go for the expression for the second one. So, alpha x sigma x prime. Alpha x can be written as just the interchange. Just the interchange. So, your alpha x is nothing but 0 sigma x sigma x 0 and your alpha prime x is nothing but sigma x 0 0 sigma x. Again do the matrix multiplication you will get 0 sigma x square sigma x square 0. Sigma x square we can replace as 1 so 0 1 1 0 you compare these two we will have to minus you will have to subtract answer will be 0. You just subtract from here to here answer is almost same thing see it is same thing so this will be 0. So, the value of the first term, we have found out the first term answer is 0. Now, we will go for the expression for the second term. Okay. Second term, this is your second term. Okay. So, you have sigma x prime alpha y minus alpha y sigma x prime. Okay. So, sigma x prime alpha y. Sigma x prime can be written as as usual sigma x 0, 0 sigma x, your alpha y will be 0 sigma y sigma y 0. So, now matrix multiplication will give you 0 0 sigma x sigma y. The next one will be we have 0 sigma x sigma y the last term will be 0. What is sigma x sigma y? Sigma x sigma y is nothing but i sigma z. So, you can write instead of this you can write i sigma z. Here too you can write i sigma z. So, you pull i out, i out. So, 0, sigma z, sigma z, 0, that will give you i alpha z. Is it okay? Any doubt? So, now you are going to reverse it. a b minus a b minus b a. Okay, a b minus b a. You are going to reverse it. So, alpha y, sigma x prime. So, you have to bring the reverse term, do the matrix multiplication. You will get exactly like this. You pull i out. Here it is minus i out. You pull minus i out. So, that will give you 0, 0, i, uh, you have pulled out. So, sigma z, sigma z, 0. So, that will be minus i alpha z. Okay. So, now you subtract from here to here. So, that will give you sigma prime x alpha y minus alpha y sigma z equals this is i alpha z minus of minus i alpha z that will give you 2i alpha z. So, we have found out the value of second term 2i alpha z. So, your uh, third term I have given an assignment for you. So, assignment goes like this. You are going to find out the expression or value of the third term. Okay. Third term. You are going to find out similar, similar calculation. So, similar discussion. And the answer is minus 2i alpha y. Look at the term here. It comes x, y, z. It is exactly like a cyclic permutation. See, x, y, z. The answer goes with plus. Here, answer is minus. It does not follow the cyclic permutation. See, x, z, answer is y. See, x, z, y. So, that is why answer is with a minus sign. Okay. Now, you are going to add all the, all the three terms. You are going to add all the three terms. Correct? The first term will be 0. The second term answer is 2i alpha z. For the third term, minus 2i alpha z. So, we are going to add all the things. Okay. When you are going to add all the three, you will get taking the common term out that will give you minus 2i c. Here you have alpha y p z. I have pulled one minus sign. So, this will be alpha z p y. Is it okay? I have brought this 2 and I have cancelled this i. So, that will give you h bar by 2 d sigma prime x by dt which is equal to minus c alpha y p z minus alpha z p y. Okay, this is for spin angular momentum sigma spin magnetic moment. This is this expression already we learned for 
ஆர்பிட்டல் மோஷன் ஓகே ஆங்குலர் ஆர்பிட்டல் ஆங்குலர் மொமெண்டம் ஓகே ஆர்பிட்டல் மோஷன் அண்ட் லுக் அட் திஸ் எக்ஸ்பிரஷன் ஆன் த ரைட் ஹேண்ட் சைட் யூ ஜஸ்ட் லுக் அட் தி எக்ஸ்பிரஷன் ஆன் த ரைட் ஹேண்ட் சைட் இட்ஸ் ஆல்மோஸ்ட் சேம் சி இட்ஸ் ஆல்மோஸ்ட் சி ஐஹெச் கிராஸ் யூ கேன்சல் அவுட் So this will give you dlx by dt which is equal to c multiplied by this expression. C, c multiplied by this expression. It's the same. Okay, it's the same. On right hand side. So you are going to add this one and this one. You are going to add these two. This is the contribution from orbital motion. Okay, orbital motion. Orbital angular momentum. This is the contribution from spin angular momentum. Spin magnetic moment. Okay, spin angular momentum. spin angular momentum you are going to add these two right hand side get cancel which is equal to zero what is the left hand side lx plus 1 by 2 h bar sigma x see right hand side is zero if right hand is zero it implies that implies that come on anyone energy is conserved angular momentum is conserved it's very clear so both will commute with each other see it's very simple that both will commute with each other suppose we are going to refer this as j we can say that j with h j with h will commute with each other so we can say that j comma h commutator is equal to 0 lx comma h is not equal to 0 s comma h is not equal to 0 if it is 0 we can say that this one will commute with hamiltonian we can say this will show the constant of motion this will be conserved but this is not the case right hand side has some value and here also right hand side has some value here right hand side is no value at all so we when you are going to add only then we can uh, show that right hand side becomes zero so equation of motion constant of motion so energy is conserved momentum is conserved so dlx by dt we have earlier we have seen okay when you are going to add it becomes zero okay it shows clearly that this concept this uh, factor lx plus 1 by 2 h bar sigma x prime is nothing but constant so this is what i said just now i h cross dj by dt which is equal to j comma h with the commutator which is equal to 0 so it means that j commutes with h l doesn't commute with h alone s doesn't commute with h alone suppose when you are going to add these two l plus s j commutes with the hamiltonian it shows uh, the constant of motion momentum is conserved okay it is clear that l plus 1 by 2 h bar so that's why from the beginning i said h bar by 2 can you remember this factor which ullenbach and goldsmith referred h bar by 2 the same thing he also obtained the same thing using uh, dirac's relativistic hamiltonian okay so so this is your contribution from spin this is the contribution from orbital angular momentum so l plus 1 by 2 h bar sigma commutes with the hamiltonian and can be taken as the total angular momentum which is nothing but your j so j equals l plus s for sigma matrix it can be written as we have already known this one sigma prime x squared which is equal to sigma prime y squared which is equal to sigma prime z squared equal to 1 this gives the eigen values of Uh, plus of and minus of plus h bar by 2 and minus h bar by 2 hence the addition part is nothing but this expression which is nothing but 8.11 so s equals 1 by 2 h bar sigma prime which is equal to 1 by 2 h bar your sigma is nothing but in a matrix sigma 0 0 sigma as i said as i said inside we have 2 by 2 matrix put together that will give you 4 by 4 matrix so this can be interpreted as spin angular momentum of the electron so thus very very important concept is uh, conclusion is the concept of spin has evolved from dirac's hamiltonian automatically it evolves it is there in the equation uh, h equals c alpha dot p alpha stands for pauli spin matrix automatically it is there okay so the concept of spin has evolved from dirac's hamiltonian automatically it's a consequence okay so we will start today uh, we have finished uh, the spin part of uh, dirac's hamiltonian we answer it clearly shows that it should be the spin should be added with uh, orbital angular momentum to have a total angular momentum only then uh, 
it it exists the spin concept exists in a vector automata okay bye students we'll see in the next class